BuzzFeed? So uh, we made a decision uh, several years ago now to, to, to build a company in a way that most publishers weren't, weren't structured, which is to build our own CMS, to build um, all our own data science, to build all our own tools, to right. build all the kind of optimization. And you know, we called this a vertically integrated model. And most other publishers at the time were using WordPress or, or Drupal or some CMS, and they were you know, outsourcing recommendations to things like Outbrain or Taboola. Or, and they, were, they were sort of putting together a bunch of tools from a bunch of different places to make um, their site. And then they would contribute the writing and sometimes even use wire services to sort of fill in the, the content. And that was sort of what publishing companies were. We made a decision to build everything ourselves or as much full as we stack. possibly could, full stack. And at the time, that was actually really tough Investors would tell us we weren't focused, we, weren't, we were trying to do too many things, how could a small company build all these different pieces better than all these other startups that are focusing entirely on it? But we thought that the benefits of integrating them would, would make it worthwhile, and eventually that um, started to become conventional wisdom where people like full stack, uh, the full stack approach. Right, it's now, it's now the received wisdom that you should yes. do this. And what happened as, along that path is as people started, as it started to become received wisdom, it started to stop being true, that it was a, the best way to, to, to build a company. And that happened largely because um, there was this jump to mobile and to mobile apps. And now so much of the, uh, so much, uh, or I would say probably the majority of content consumption is happening inside mobile apps. Period. Now, yeah, so it might, you know, you think Facebook traffic, but in a, in a way that's people opening Facebook, seeing a BuzzFeed story, clicking to the BuzzFeed story from Facebook or from Twitter or from Pinterest. Um, and so that um, has started to create an environment where media is becoming much more distributed. Um, our video business uh, started about two and a half years ago by Zay Frank in, in LA, um, also um, showed us that the, the full stack model was reaching its, its limits in that video consumption was happening in a much more distributed way. So you had built the system that was optimized for generating traffic and making money from stuff that happened on buzzfeed.com. And now you're realizing that's not what you want to do. Well, yeah, what we realized is that that was just one piece of, piece of our business. So, and, and that um, in the course of two and a half years, video Went, you know, went from not existing to being a billion views a month last month and, and it's been growing really you know, rapidly, faster than the, than the rest of our, our business. And part of the reason is that we, we said, well initially we said we're a full stack company, put the video on BuzzFeed CMS into our, and, and that's another layer in the stack. And that didn't work that well. People were at work you know, browsing the site, they didn't want, they didn't have headphones, they didn't want audio to play, they, um, people were going to places like YouTube to consume lots of, lots of video when they wanted to consume video. Right. And, and so we could have draw, drawn the conclusion that people aren't into video because it wasn't really working as well on our site as a list or a quiz. Um, but we knew people love video and we started to put the content other places and see you know, tremendous results putting the, putting the media other places. And that caused us to start to rethink our model and say, well, where's the tech advantage here if we're just making content and putting it on other people's platforms? So we started developing ways of tracking distributed media and pu pulling it together into a unified dashboard so our team can see how our video is doing on all these different different platforms. And so now you're at a point where I guess internally you've been telling the team we are focused primarily on creating content that lives on other platforms. Is that, am I summing that up correctly? It, it not not pri primarily, but what we what we what I've been doing is meeting with every team within BuzzFeed um, with this little chart, and the chart essentially sh uh, shows our model for making content, which is um, we have to be very good at making content that people love. You know, news, buzz, life, video, lists, quizzes, all different types of content and have great tools for making content. And then we send that content to various places. We send it to our own website and to our own apps, um, which are owned and operated properties that remain important to us, where we have certain ability to get data and learn from what we're doing. But we also send it to uh, natively to other platforms like YouTube or right. Facebook. And that's or, the shift, right? Is that focus from saying we're focus primarily on the site to saying we're doing a bunch of things. I mean, Zay Frank has said on our stage and other places that, that only 5% of his views happen on, on buzzfeed.com. Is that, do you think the rest of the content you make is gonna follow that model? Where most of the views, most of the interactions, the vast majority of them will happen, Facebook, Snapchat, other places? I, I think that, that, that things are trending in that direction. Our, our goal is to, to really be agnostic about it, to be indifferent about it. So in, in an ideal world, we would be indifferent to where our content is consumed. We would want to do whatever is best for the consumer. 
And if we can do that and still have a great business and still generate revenue and still get l data and learning back, then, we, then, then, we're, then we're happy. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't try to do what publishers have done for years, which is say, you know, come to my site, come to my site, look at the banner ads that are on my site, right. and that's the only way they can make, make but money. But you do make, I mean, traditionally, you do make money when, when someone ha something happens on your own property. If it happens outside of your property, then you've got to worry a bunch of, about a bunch of different things. Usually someone wants to split economics with you. Mm -hmm. You've got to teach advertisers that it's okay for them to have your ad, or their, your content somewhere else. How are you going through that process? Because it's one thing to say, it's cool that all our stuff lives on Facebook and, and YouTube. How do you make money, for instance, when that video is viewed that way? Yeah, I mean, some of, some of it has already happened for us, and without it being a conscious strategy. So partly what we, what we did is we looked at some of the things that were already happening in our business, and we said, oh, what can we learn from this, and how can we turn this into something that's intentional instead of unintentional? Um, when you look at an advertiser like Nestle Purina, um, they're, they're one of our biggest advertisers. They're primarily um, 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 off BuzzFeed. So, so when you look at the Dear Kitten video, which I, which I think you've seen, yeah. um, you know, that, that's a, a YouTube video that we created in our studio. We used all the knowledge of our, of our business making videos in different formats and the sets we have and all the, all the learnings we have to make a video that people would share. Um, we also, that was the fifth video we made in that series, so we, we had the iterative process with them of learning and improving. And so it was a good example, actually, of, of, of the distributed box in that diagram where we're making content, sending it to YouTube, um, sending it to Facebook video, and then getting data back and learnings back so we can get better at it, and then also getting revenue back because we're doing it on, on behalf of a brand. So one of the big questions about BuzzFeed for a couple years was you guys have this, this you know, symbiosis or dependency on Facebook. You're very tied into Facebook. So much of your traffic seemed to be Facebook generated. Now it seems like you're actually pushing farther in that direction. You've got multiple platforms. It seems like that's a real risk for you guys if, if you're going to live on other people's platforms that you're more dependent on the rules they set and change. Uh, yeah, I mean, YouTube is our, is our biggest video platform now and, and has, has grown really quickly to be a major you know, part, of the, part of the business. Um, Facebook is is also you know getting into video in an aggressive way, and they they quickly became the, our number two partner in terms of distribution for for video. Um, so so Facebook you know was going to be a, a player in in the video space as well. Um, we also syndicate to Yahoo right, and so AOL well and other places. So people, so you're not dependent on one, but you are you do have to play by their rules. They might change the way they want to work with partners and distributors. It seems like the advantage of creating your own site and your own island is that's that's your domain and you get to control your destiny. Yeah, I, th I think that the market is going to remain fairly competitive. Like if anything now, it's getting more competitive. There's more platforms that want content, and there's very few people who know how to make social content, digital video at scale. So when you look at, at, at the competitive battles happening in tech right now, you know, a lot of it centers around the mobile device. There's the handset manufacturers. There's the, the operating system for, for phones. Um, which in some cases, you know, in Apple's case, it's the same company, but in Android's case, it's a different company. Um, there's the carriers, you know, the Verizons and AT&Ts. Uh, there's the apps um, um, on top of that. And, and they, a lot of those people are, are a lot of those, uh, the, the sort of battle that you see happening right now is, is which layer is most important, which layer gets commodified, and which layer is, is going to become um, key, the, the core value in the mobile experience. And so all of those layers want video content right now, right? So you have people talk, coming to talk to us about making video for them that you never would have imagined would so come talk to So they're competing for you. If, if, some, if you don't like someone's terms, if they change their terms, you're comfortable because you can shift your business somewhere else. Yeah, we will shift our, so I, so I think at a fundamental level, we, we shift our business towards platforms where, where we can, pub, when we send content, we get data back so we can learn and we get revenue back so that we can invest in more. In, in more one of those content. charts I've seen, it's, it says it's got sort of a question mark or a dotted line around traditional media, right? You're not getting data back if you were to distribute to TV. So are you going to continue to sort of avoid doing a, a BuzzFeed TV show or, or anything sort of via traditional media? Yeah, so the, 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 big, the big problem with traditional media, whether it's print or TV or theatrical release of films, is that you create, create content and then what you get back is money. 
but you don't get back any knowledge and you don't have the relationship with the consumer or, 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 or data that allows you to get better over time. And we, we like to be in places where the model is, have a creative spark, have ideas, and then be able to test those ideas with real audience and engage those, those, the, the audience. So it's, it's art and science and you can learn and get better connecting with your audience over time. It's, in a way, it's like thinking of media as a service, not just as an end product or not just as a, you know, a box of cereal that you then sell wholesale to a, to a to a supermarket, you know, we we want to actually know like what are people doing in the supermarket? The are they looking business. around? Are they, you know, is it is it where we are on the shelf, or is it the color of our box, or is it the price, or what it, what what is it that is causing someone to not eat our cereal because we know that it's really tasty cereal? Um, and so cereal, cereal is good, but you need data with the cereal. Yeah, you need you, you we we want to be. Uh, I think it was Robert Kinsel at YouTube who uses this this this. Um, this um, comparison, but there's wholesalers and retailers, and tech companies tend to think of themselves as retailers, where they actually know what is the customer doing, what is the consumer doing. A lot of the traditional media companies think of themselves as wholesalers. They, they essentially will sell, sell into any window, whoever pays them the most. Like, okay, we'll sell over to the top, we'll sell you know, t uh, online, we'll sell to the traditional media, we don't care, we just, whoever will pay us the most money in an auction is who, who, gets, our, who gets our content. That's the way a wholesaler thinks. A retailer wants to understand the customer, wants to understand their experience. And, and so um, I think when you look at, at BuzzFeed, we like to be in an environment where, where we actually are connected to the consumer in a deeper way. So if we can do that with TV, um, we would love to make uh, you know longer something that's TV like or feature film length, and we're working with with Michael Shamberg, a great Hollywood producer who's been spending almost a year with us now, studying the way we make content and thinking about ways to bridge the gap between these two worlds. And I think that's a really there's there's some really so there interesting could be a Buzzfeed movie or a Buzzfeed TV show. Yeah, I think we, you know we, we, it's definitely something we want to to do and we'll experiment with.